Hey everyone, my name is Erica Sweet. I work on Microsoft C++ team, and I'll be joined in a few minutes by Craig Lowen, who works on WSL or the Windows subsystem for Linux. And we've teamed up today to show you the new WSL2 toolset for C++ development in Visual Studio 2022, which lets you build and debug C++ code on WSL2 from Visual Studio without ever adding an SSH connection. So the first thing you'll need to do is set up your WSL distro to ensure you have all the required build tools installed. So you'll need a C++ compiler, CMake, an underlying build tool like Make or Ninja, rsync, zip, and GDB. And since I'm using Ubuntu, I can install these all using the system package manager. I'm now ready to open my C++ code in Visual Studio 2022. I'm using a CMake project, which is our recommendation for C++ cross-platform development. And my source files are located in the Windows file system. Thanks to Bullet Physics for creating Bullet 3, which is a cross-platform 3D physics library that we'll be using in this demo. I'm using Visual Studio's new CMake presets integration which will activate automatically anytime you have a CMake presets.json file at the root of the project. Across the menu bar, you'll see that I have three dropdowns, and the dropdown on the left is my active target system. So I can build and debug the same project on Windows, remote systems, and on WSL from the same instance of Visual Studio, which makes this a great option for your C++ cross-platform development. And when you select WSL2, Visual Studio will automatically use the new WSL2 toolset for configuration and build. When you're targeting WSL, you'll have a native IntelliSense experience. So for example, if I were to go to document on this header file, you'll see that Visual Studio is automatically copying my system headers from the Linux file system over to Windows for a native IntelliSense experience. And with that, I'm going to pass it on over to Craig to build and debug this project on WSL2. Thanks, Erica. So over here on my machine, and literally all we have to do to get started is hit F5. From here, everything is compiled and built inside of Linux using the Windows subsystem for Linux. And we use GDB to connect to Visual Studio for a full debugging session. So our app started, and you'll actually notice that this is a Linux-based GUI app. Um, which WSL now has support for in the Windows Insider Preview channel. You can learn more about that at aka.ms slash WSLG. What really gives us away is the Linux-based tiling here at the top. So you can see that these, this Chrome tiling is uh, GTK-based, indicating that we are actually running this directly on Linux in a Linux instance. So I can go ahead and interact with my app. I'm going to drag this robot around and hit D to hit trigger a breakpoint. And I can use all of my favorite Visual Studio debugging techniques directly in here. I can take a look at my call stack. I can take a look at these uh, environment variables and what their actual variables are um, using my regular workflows that I would use inside of Visual Studio. This is hugely exciting uh, to unlock the potential to use your favorite uh, tools it, using Visual Studio to debug, run, and develop your C++ based apps inside of Linux as well, even though you're using a Windows based machine. And excitingly enough, if we go ahead and close this, just as Eric mentioned, I can go ahead and use my local machine and target this back to Windows just by clicking that drop down button. So what's actually happening behind the scenes to make this possible? Well, if I go ahead and hit build, uh, you will see that I have a line here saying starting copying files to a remote machine. What we're actually doing is we're creating a twin of your copies that are stored on your Windows drive inside of the Windows subsystem for Linux in your Linux file system. The reason for this is that uh, WSL2 runs a lot faster when your files are in the Linux file system. It can actually be up to 3 to 20 times faster than WSL1. On top of that, you get the added bonus of WSL2, which includes a full Linux kernel and 100% system call compatibility, letting you do fun things like run Linux GUI apps, for example. And so we can pop over to my terminal window here, and you can see that I have this project open inside of the .vs folder in my home folder on Linux. Uh, this is what is being copied over using rsync, so only incremental changes are uh, basically transferred as you develop.
If you want to learn more about this project, you can take a look at the full blog post explaining these changes in the links in the description below, as well as links to the full code for this repository, um, links to more CMake presets, WSL docs, and the WSL repository as well, where you can file any technical issues or feedback that you might have. Thank you so much for tuning in.